What if I told you there was a chemical out there that would buffer your pH, prevent algae growth, make your water sparkle, and be more enjoyable to swim in without any drawbacks or side effects? Well, that's what we're gonna explore today on Swimming Pool Science. Hey everyone, it's me again, Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science, hanging out here in my fireplace. So glad to have you with us. Now, we see a lot of chemicals come and go on the market from different companies that claim to do a lot of things. And I'll tell you what, if I saw a chemical in the, at the local pool store that claimed it was gonna reduce the amount of chlorine I would need, it was gonna help prevent algae growth, it was gonna soften the water and make it feel more comfortable, it was gonna keep the bugs away, and it was gonna buffer pH, I'd say, yeah, right. This is snake oil, I don't believe it. But there's been a chemical out there that has been under our noses for years and it's been proven to work in swimming pools. That chemical I'm referring to is boron and the boron related chemicals that fall under the umbrella term borates. Friends, don't forget, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps us move up the rankings on YouTube and it shows your support. And make sure you hit that little bell next to it because that's gonna alert you when we've got new content. For our purposes here, we're gonna to stick to mainly boric acid and borax. Those are the most commonly used ones that you'll be able to find easily, whether you go to your local grocery store or you find it online. In fact, I've got some links online down in the description where if you can't find it at your local grocery store or your hardware store, you can shoot down to the description and get it there. Now there are a handful of pool professionals out there that know the secrets of borates and their benefits and use them regularly in their customers' pools. I'll be honest with you, I've been to a lot of classes over the years and we've touched on borates. They're a common theme in a lot of these professional classes that I do, but we go over them quickly and they're glossed over and then we're on to other things and they're kind of forgotten about. But in doing research, I've found that this is a cure-all for a lot of different issues and ailments and it's gonna make your pool a lot easier to take care of and a lot more comfortable to swim in. So let's talk about some of the benefits of borates and how they can make your swimming pool experience a whole lot better. First of all, they are an algistat. Now what that means is they don't actively kill algae, but how they do affect algae is that they prevent metabolism and photosynthesis. That means that your algae cells can't make food and even if they did, they couldn't metabolize it and process it anyway to reproduce. So what that's gonna do is keep the algae down. If you don't have an algae bloom in your pool, you're probably not gonna get one. If you got algae in your pool, you're gonna need some other treatments, and we've got a great video for that right up here. By adding borates to the pool, we also create an additional buffering system that works alongside the traditional bicarbonate buffering system. So now we have extra buffering that's gonna hold that pH right where you want it. In terms of buffering, borate complements salt chlorine generating systems really well as it works to neutralize the sodium hydroxide byproduct that's created in the chlorine creating process that happens in the salt cell. Borates also keep the flying insects away. If you have a bee or a wasp problem at your pool, the time to do your borates is in the winter because when springtime rolls around and those bee colonies and wasp colonies come back out and start looking for water sources, well, when they come to your pool and they find it, they're gonna take a nice big drink. They're not gonna make it back to home to tell the rest of their hive where your pool is. And that's gonna reduce the number of bees, insects, wasps around your pool and make your swimming pool experience that much more pleasant. But folks, that's not all. In addition to the algae stat, the buffering, the keeping the bugs away, you also get shimmering water that feels great to swim in. The borates give a water softening effect that are gonna leave you feeling much better, less dry after your swim. And the borates give the water a shimmer that is unparalleled. So with all these exciting features, there's gotta be a catch, right? So what's the catch? There's gotta be some drawbacks. Well guys, at this safe recommended range, borates are about as dangerous as table salt. An adult would have to drink over two gallons of pool water day after day after day. A dog, about a gallon of water. So what are the quantities of borates that we're gonna to add to our pool? The recommended dosage of borates is 30 to 50 parts per million, similar to cyanuric acid or stabilizer. And much like cyanuric acid or stabilizer, once the borates are in the pool, 
They don't get reacted out, they stay in. The only way they come out is through backwashing, drag out, splash out, or physically removing the water. So they stay in, it's really nice. The great thing is, is that if you don't have enough boric acid, you can supplement with borax and add them into the pool together. I wouldn't recommend mixing them directly in a bucket, but it's fine to add boric acid in the pool and then come back and add a couple boxes of borax. So first we're gonna take you through the steps and how easy it is to add borates to your pool at the pool that started it all on our borates journey. And then we'll come back and we'll get into some more detail about how to get just the right amount in your specific swimming pool. All right, so we got our bag of boric acid here at my sister's pool where we're gonna add it. Got a few things with me. I've got a small scale. I've got the sweet CMP Smart Scoop, which I'll put a link for um, in the description because these are great tools to have. You, you can use them for different chemicals, rinse them out in between, of course. Um, but we're gonna measure out a very fixed quantity of our boric acid uh, because along with adding boric acid, we're gonna figure out the capacity of this pool so that we can add just the right amount to hit that uh, about 50 or so parts per million on our boric acid. So uh, we're gonna measure that out. We're gonna mark our container here at the three pound mark. Uh, we'll throw about six pounds of boric acid in, then we'll let it mi mix up. We'll come back and remeasure, and then based on those calculations, uh, which we'll go to the magic board for, um, we'll be able to determine A, the capacity of this pool, and exactly how much more we need to, to add to uh, hit our, our 50 parts per million. Now, you don't have to be this precise when adding. Uh, just a good basic estimate. You add about half of what you think you need. You come back and measure it and then you kind of figure out how much more you're gonna need and then, and then test again to see if you hit the mark or uh, if you went just a hair too high or you need to add a little more. If you do go a hair too high on the boric acid, not to worry, uh, you know, we're talking like if you hit 65 parts per million instead of, of that 50 parts per million, not the end of the world, no big deal. It's not like if our pH was way off or if our chlorine was through the roof or anything like that, um, that will eventually come down through backwashing. Uh, or splash out. So not a big deal. We don't have to be precisely perfect with this, but I just thought it'd be fun to kind of calculate the capacity of this pool while we were at it. So one of the cool things about boric acid is although um, it's got a fair amount of hazard and cautionary statements, uh, they don't want you to inhale it. Uh, they don't want you to get it into your eyes. They, um, they don't want you to eat it, things like that. But uh, that kind of goes for just about anything in concentrated form. Um, they, they, they do say on the package they want you to wear gloves. Um, me being me, I'm not going to wear gloves. I've got a very large body of water that I'll be able to wash my hands in right away, right next to me. So um, I'm feeling pretty safe and confident. Uh, and I'm going to administer this to the pool just like I would uh, salt or soda ash, things like that, where I can sprinkle it in. But I am going to be careful and cautious that I'm not dumping it everywhere and making a huge mess. Um, because although, although this stuff is fairly safe in the grand scheme of things compared to things like chlorine and acid and certain algicides, um, I'm not looking to make, make a big mess everywhere and, and cause all kinds of trouble. So I'm going to do my best to stay neat on this. Um, you know, if um, I, I suggest you guys wear safety glasses, I've got mine on, um, wear gloves, things like that, um, but just be safe about it um, and it's, and it's going to be just fine. All right, so I got my scale zeroed out. I'm gonna be scooping up some boric acid. And this stuff's a pretty fine powder. It's much more of a fine powder than sugar, as you can see here. So it's gonna be one of those things to just be careful of, be cautious. We don't wanna, we don't wanna be breathing this stuff in. It's gonna create a little dust. So just take it easy. It's, it's harmless. The way boric acid works is humans are able to metabolize borates, no problem. It passes through your system. Um, within within reason, of course, just like anything. If you eat too many bananas, you're gonna get sick and die. If you drink too much water, you're gonna get sick and die. But with um, with borates, um, bugs and things like that, because you'll find this stuff in bug killer, um, it cannot, it does not work well with insects. They cannot metabolize it. It, it um, stops up their digestive system and it kills them. That's one of the cool things about it. If any bugs come, any bees come over to your pool, they drink your pool water with the borates in it. Uh, they're not making it back to their hive to tell the rest of their family where your pool is. So, all right, coming up on it. Let's see if we can get three pounds. We may end up just going two and a half, but as long as we have a fixed amount, that is what we're looking for. And let's 
go to two pounds. That is two pounds right there. Okay, take it off the scale, level it off. And level it off as best we can. it right there two pounds boric here we go all right let's get this stuff in the pool so I got to fix two pounds here and once again I'm just gonna pour low it's not nothing crazy and I just pour right over any kind of returns kind of bubble up, there'll be a little bit of residue on the top, but it's no big deal. Any chunks, you just brush them in just like you would salt, and it's that easy. The other way to drop it in, pour a little right along the edge. Follow up behind it, the brush. All this does is just helps it move quicker and get mixed in. And don't need to worry about a little bit of stuff on top, it'll sink in and dissolve. I don't want to be agitated with the brush, but not a big deal. So. so how much and which type of borates do we need to add to the pool? Well, the nice thing is that the different forms of borate, the ones we're talking about, boric acid and borax, they can be in the pool together at the same time. You can use half of one and half of the other to get your total amount, and there's not gonna be any adverse side effects. I've got this borate test kit here, and I'm not a huge fan of test strips. I prefer to do reagent tests and drop tests because then I can manipulate my test, and if you did watch our calculate your pool volume through alkalinity video, I can change that test to make it more or less accurate. Uh, whereas with a, uh, with a test strip like this, I'm kind of subjective to the colors and what I interpret, which may be a little different. Or, you know, if you're colorblind, uh, these, these test strips aren't the greatest. So, but, but as I was saying earlier, we don't have to be laboratory precise on this to get it damn close to where we need to be. Um, so this is gonna suffice. And I will put a link for these in the description uh, where you can get some of these as well. All right, guys, here we are with the magic board with all the numbers on it. And what we're trying to do is just a couple of different things, figure out how much of what we need and how it's all gonna work. So a few things we're gonna start over here. We've got boric acid. I have a knife of knowledge here to help me point. Boric acid, some numbers, and borax with some numbers. And basically what it is is for boric acid, 4.57 pounds is gonna give you 10 parts per million of boric acid in 10,000 gallons of water. So we know that this weight of boric acid gives us this chemical reading in this volume of water. Uh, I've also done that, I've converted that over to metric, so 0.547, 547 grams, uh, will give you 10 parts per million in 10,000 liters of water. So basically 5, 0.47 milligrams per liter um, is gonna give you one part per million um, in a liter of water, just as uh, if I convert my pounds over to ounces, 0 0.0007312 ounces per gallon is equal to one part per million of boric acid. I've done the same thing over here with borax, 7.05 pounds gives you 10 parts per million in 10,000 gallons of water, 0.001128 ounces per gallon is equal to one part per million. Uh, down here, have the metrics done for you down here. Uh, where did I get these numbers? Well, I got this great chart uh, that I'll show you here in this picture right here. And I do have a link to that as well as some of my other resources in the description. So uh, what we wanna know with uh, April and Matt's pool, where we were just moments ago, um, it's approximately 30 by 16. Average depth is three and a half feet. Um, and then when I factor in, when I crunch these numbers and factor in, I get um, it's like 10,000, like 600 gallons of water when I crunch the numbers. Uh, and then if I factor in for pipes and the plumbing and all that stuff, um, I just rounded up to 11,000 gallons for their pool, um, just based off rough measurements. Um, so kind of what I want to know is I added a fixed amount of 
boric acid to the pool and I got a certain reading, how many gallons do I have? Uh, so what we did here is I have my formulas up here where if I want to know how many ounces I need or, or milligrams I need of boric acid or borax, I can plug my numbers into these formulas here um, that I have. So if I already have capacity, if I know I have capacity, then I'm going to just uh, basically what I'm going to do is first I take my goal parts per million. If my, if my parts per million goal is 50 parts per million, then I put 50 right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'll take my ounces per gallon or my milligrams per liter number at the one part per million level, which in this case, if we're doing if we're doing ounces per gallon, it'd be the seven zero 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 seven three one two number would go here. So then I multiply that, and then once I've multiplied what's here in the parentheses, I multiply that by my capacity, and that's going to tell me my ounces or my milligrams needed, depending if I'm going standard or metric. Um, so to reach that desired parts per million. Now, if I don't know my capacity and I'm just throwing chemicals in, but I wanna know how big my pool is, well, then I use this formula right here. I, I will add some product in, maybe say four pounds or um, you know, uh, two kilograms of boric acid or borax, uh, let that mix in, I test my water, then I use that same number, that one part per million number for either boric acid or borax um, and use, depending on whether I go standard or metric, I make my choice. Then my test parts per million, whatever my water tested out to, I multiply that. Then what I do is I take my ounces added or my milligrams added and then I divide by what I got for this number to get my capacity in gallons or liters. So that's essentially what I did here with April's pool. I added eight pounds of boric acid in the water or 128 ounces. Um, I tested my borates, it came out kind of hard to, to, to say, but it looked like right around somewhere between uh, 15 to 19 to 20 parts per million. I just called it 16 parts per million, roughly 16 parts per million. I'm just gonna use that number. Um, I know my ounces per gallon at one part per million. That's that number right here. I've got that here. Now I can say, all right, I tested my, I added eight pounds. I tested my board at 16 parts per million. Well, I want to hit around 50. So I need another 16 more pounds to get what I want. That's the easy part. You can just do that. You can figure that up in your head really quick. You don't have to go through all this math uh, to get that desired. But if you want to know your capacity of your pool and get a little more precise, then we just got to go through the steps. So what I'm going to do in this case is I know my boric acid added. I know what my borate test showed after it was mixed in, and I have some other constants here, so I can find my capacity. So if we're gonna do that, first thing we do is we do this bottom part here first. Step one, 16 parts per million times 0 0.0007312 gives me 0.0124. Now I go to step two. I know I added 128 ounces, so I'm gonna take 128 ounces and then I'm dividing that by this number I got here. And what does that come out to? 10,940 gallons. So that's still a little bit of an approximation because I didn't go like 32 decimal places back. I wasn't really, really precise. But if you look here, kind of what I guesstimated right here based on the size of the pool, awfully dang close. We can just really call this an 11,000 gallon pool. And then we can use that for whenever we're adding any other chemicals. We know we've got 11,000 gallon pool and we're gonna get damn close on all of our other chemical reading or uh, chemical additions uh, to the pool. Uh, so that's it, that's kind of the numbers, that's how this works. I will, um, you know, you can screenshot this and then screenshot that other picture so you'll have those other numbers to use for references um, and that's how we do it. So the other thing we need to do is we need to plan to adjust our pH and alkalinity levels. So ideally you're going to do this before, you're going to want to push that alkalinity down to about a 60 or 70 part per million um, and get your pH down in the normal range. Now after you add your borates, that is going to push that alkalinity and pH up. So you're probably going to have to make some acid adjustments a little bit later um, once the job is done and those borates have had a chance to settle into the water after a day or two. So we're actually back at this pool about a month later after adding our borates to the water. Uh, levels are sitting at about 55 parts per million. Water is sparkling, water looks good. Water actually feels silky smooth. I haven't swam in this yet, but we have since. Uh, we've added to a couple more pools that we watch really closely, so we're gonna monitor how this goes, but so far so good on the borates. Things are looking well. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for this edition on bore rates of swimming pool science. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, leave me a note in the comments if you have any further questions. I want to know about it. If you guys have any great feedback, the comments are a great place to put that too. Don't forget, guys, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to like and share this video. We'll see you next time. Yeah, it's just a, it's just an algae preventer. But it's that, even most of that algae stuff is like ammonia and all this stuff that you want to be put in the pool. Yeah, not so not so great, not so appealing to the swimmer. So.